I'm usually careful to tell people when you're building new uh, with hempcrete, it could be anywhere from 20 to 30% more expensive than traditional home construction. Uh, but you have to think of it, and I like to frame it for people as though it's a loss leader like geothermal or solar, where yes, you're making an investment up front, but the cost savings over time on the ownership of the building, you can see uh, conservatively anywhere from 30 to 60% reduction in your mechanical costs. <laughs> Hello everyone, we are back today with another really exciting episode. We are at the Delaware Water Gap at the Hempstead in Pennsylvania, a gorgeous farm, very heavily involved with hemp, which is why we've got a master over here in, in the hemp, industrial hemp industry, Cameron McIntosh of Amerishamp. So good to have you. Uh, thank you guys for coming. We're so excited to have you here. <laughs> I'm really excited to be here. You've got a lot of really cool stuff going thank on. You. <laughs> yeah. And let's jump just right into it. Okay. This is hempcrete here, right? Yep, yeah. Correct. Yep. <laughs> and so the start to finish, you know, we've got materials going in with each other, mixing up, and then we're here. Can you like lead us through what sure. those materials are and how that looks? This process starts with good materials and we're starting with European sources in the in the interest of transitioning to american sources as they become available once we mix the hempcrete we're using a mortar mixer an internal rotating paddle versus a drum that rotates so that's the difference between a mortar mixer and a concrete mixer we're using a mortar mixer uh dumping that out onto a table and then we rake it into this hopper box that feeds this system so you folks have a really neat way of applying the hempcrete to the foundation it's with this bad boy right here <laughs> yeah. what's, what's this called this is the e-reezy spray applied method uh we're basically again we're using um, a high pressure airline uh in the back here that draws the hempcrete down these tubes uh and then you literally shoot it at the wall and work your way up um and it ends up with a, a much more modeled surface texture because we're spraying it instead of casting it um, but then you actually use, uh, and Kate, if you want to grab it, there's the spike float right behind us there, um, that, uh, we use this to basically smooth the surface. So once it's, once it's sprayed on after about two days, we come in and we polish it down to a nice flat surface that can then be plastered. You had mentioned that it does take a bit more time to do the cast type of building versus what we've got here. I can definitely attest to that. I've done a couple workshops and you had said, you know, it is, it's a really beautiful experience. You, you learn more about the plant and what it's capable of doing. It takes, you know, that longer process, slow motion allows you to get that connection as well as community. I've had some really, really amazing experiences doing that. For those of you who might not know, um, cast in place is the traditional method of building with hempcrete where you're creating a void with a pair of forms on either side of the frame in the middle and into that void, you're then placing by hand the material moving the forms and, and, you know, and continuing. There's little changes architecturally to the way that you design with hempcrete that can be made by any architect. When you're building new, you have to think about where you want your electrical boxes. Uh, we run conduit in the wall as opposed to just running wires so that if you ever needed to, you could pull another wire. I'm usually careful to tell people when you're building new uh, with hempcrete, it could be anywhere from 20 to 30% more expensive than traditional home construction. Uh, but you have to think of it and I like to frame it for people as though it's a loss leader like geothermal or solar where yes, you're making an investment up front, but the cost savings over time on the ownership of the building, you can see uh, conservatively anywhere from 30 to 60% reduction in your mechanical costs, your heating and cooling and dehumidification and all those things. So, you know, the, the cost of owning a hempcrete home over time is actually dramatically cheaper than, you know, a traditional construction where you're just belching right. you know fossil right. fuel heat into a, right. into a space <laughs> let alone its impact on the planet exactly yeah so what would the next step be here or does it stay like this no so that's a that's a great question uh the the traditional finish for hempcrete uh is an old world lime plaster system so usually a a, a two to three coat system let's say i choose red incorporation in the plastering and yep. and then years later i say you know what? i think i want to do green or white is it easy to change the colors of the wall yeah definitely and you can paint 
plaster. Uh, it has to be a masonry type paint and they do make those. They're, you know, common, they're widely available. They're not specific to hempcrete. The young family of four that's buying their new home yep. and says, hey, maybe someday I would like this entire thing to be made out of hemp, yep. hempcrete. Um, what would the first small step be for someone to take into maybe just experimenting what sure. it's what it's about, what it's like to get involved? If you're looking to incorporate hempcrete into a home, um, particularly here in the Northeast, we have lots of older homes. You know, that typical family of four, they're not always going to go buy a Ryan Homes or a Toll Brothers beautiful, you know, brand new home. They might buy um, you know, an older home that, that needs some work. Uh, and that's a wonderful opportunity here, especially, like I said, in the Northeast, where we have a lot of those homes. And you're familiar, Kate, with growing up in New York. Um, you know, lots of older homes that are poorly insulated using outdated and inefficient heating systems. Uh, so if you are looking, you know, to possibly work this in, uh, into your renovations, say you buy an older home and you're, you're thinking of renovating it over time, you can move through piece by piece, kind of like we're doing here at the at the Hempstead, take it room by room uh, and do a retrofit. Retrofitting is just a little bit different, especially with an older home. Uh, it takes a little bit more planning, forethought. Um, but again, it's, it's a wonderful way to use a carbon storing material uh, in an existing structure that is uh, already very inefficient, right? An older structure with poor insulation, adding a carbon storing insulation to an existing structure, thereby not incurring the carbon cost of building a new structure. So in our opinion, uh, this is actually one of the, uh, I would say most uh, efficient as far as the planet is concerned uses for hempcrete, where you're literally storing carbon in an existing structure and in the process making it more energy efficient. Hemp all the way. Ha, 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 ha.